Hello, this is video number 40. We're talking about kinetic energy and work. So in the previous video, I just talked about the sign of the work and I said that in this video, we're going to explain why the sign of the work, whether the work is positive, negative, or zero, why we care about it. So I have my next slide here that explains this conceptually here. You've got a picture of Isaac Newton here. You've got an apple falling down. And so it's falling down because of the weight pulling it down. So the force and the displacement are in the same direction. We just learned in a previous video that means that the work done on that apple by gravity is positive. So we know that when the apple falls down, that it speeds up. So as I have written here, when positive work is done on an object, its speed increases. And the opposite happens. What if he threw the apple upward? Well, then the displacement would be upward, but the force is still down. It's still gravity pulling it down. Gravity causes the, the apple to slow down after it gets tossed up. So the work done by gravity is now negative because it's slowing it down. Well, because it's in the opposite direction. But that negative work makes it slow down. So when negative work is done, the speed decreases. So that's why we really care about is the work positive or negative because it affects the speed of your object and in turn, if it affects the speed, it actually affects the energy that the object has. So that brings us to our work kinetic energy theorem, our work energy theorem. Now, it says that the net work on a system equals the change in kinetic energy. Now we haven't defined kinetic energy yet, that's in the next slide. But what happens is that kinetic energy is actually defined by looking at this theorem, which is derived simply from the kinematic equations and Newton's second law. But I skipped the derivation. You can look it up if you want to. But what looks like a brand new equation here that says that a net work done on a system or on an object equals the change in this quantity, 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mv initial squared. This is nothing new. It comes from just a manipulation of Newton's second law and the kinematic equations. But now that we know this, what we can do is we can say, okay, well this quantity, we're going to call it the kinetic energy. And then we can say that the work changes the kinetic energy. It can either increase or decrease this kinetic energy depending on if the work is positive or negative. So I have a slide, uh, well before I get to it, this picture here just shows that there's a man pushing a box to the left. So he's doing work on this box and as a result, well this box speeds up. Maybe it was at rest and then it starts to move after he pushes it to the left. So its energy increased because he did work on it. So that's what this kinetic energy theorem says. And now we can go ahead and define formally kinetic energy is defined as one half mv squared. And I like to just call it the energy of motion. Whenever an object is moving, then you know that it has this type of energy because this energy depends on the speed, that's your v, it depends on that speed squared and it also depends on the mass of your object. So, just to give a little example, if you have a tiny a little mouse running toward you, or a huge elephant running toward you, well, you know, which one are you more scared of? Maybe you're scared of the mouse, but I would be more scared of the elephants, because the elephant is so much more massive than the mouse, that the elephant has so much more energy and he's gonna trample you. Well, the mouse, you can probably just flick it with your finger and, you know, it'll go away, all right? So this kinetic energy depends on the mass of the object, the more mass, the more kinetic energy, and also on the speed squared. So the more speed, the more energy. The units for energy, kinetic energy is joule. All of the energies that we'll talk about will always have the same units, and all the energies will be scalars so that is a good thing that the energy itself is not a vector. So we don't have to worry about finding components of vectors once we're talking about energy.
But with work, we still have to worry about uh, vectors because we have to find those components.